Hey guys, and welcome back to our electronics tutorial series. My name is Aaron from AX Electronic, and today we are going to learn how to put our op amps into LT Spice. So we're about to start looking at a lot of really cool op amp circuits, and for you to get a really deep understanding, you're going to need to kind of probe around and see what's going on at every single point in these circuits. Now, you could build these circuits, but it's pretty time consuming. You need an oscilloscope to really probe around and see what's going on. So I think it's easiest to start off simulating them. So we're going to use LT Spice in order to simulate these circuits, see if maybe we're not going crazy whenever we're doing our analysis. Okay. So if you don't have a background in LT Spice, I recommend that you go back, watch my LT Spice videos that are in my circuit analysis lecture series, because that's going to give you the basics of how to simulate circuits with resistors, capacitors, inductors, things like that. So it's going to be a whole lot better for you in the long run if you go back and watch those videos get a good foundation on the basics because LT Spice is a very, very powerful tool and very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of your way. I already have my LT Spice window all opened up. So if you didn't have it opened up right now, you would want to create a new schematic, but I already, I've already got my schematic ready. So this is about op amps. So let's go ahead and get an op amp put into our circuit. Now, the way we can do that is we can press F2 and if we go back, because I'm a little bit forward already, so this is the screen that you will normally see whenever you first hit F2. So it has a whole bunch of different stuff, capacitors, uh, let's see, different voltage sources, inductors, all sorts of different things like that. But we want ourselves an op amp. So if we check over here, there's a little thing that says op amps with brackets around it. And that's going to be our op amps library. So if we double click on that, we can see that there are a whole lot of op amps that are available to us. Okay, so a lot of people have already modeled these op amps and given them to us for free, which is awesome. Now, all of these op amps have some non-idealities non with them, which means that maybe they're not good at high frequency or low frequency or stuff like that. So it can get a little bit more confusing, especially if you're not too sure about the op amps capabilities. So whenever you're just starting out, what I recommend using is I recommend using universal op amp number two. Okay, so you could use universal op amp. The only problem is there's no output voltage range limit. So even though we provide a, or a power to the rails, that output voltage range can go however high you want, which doesn't make any sense at all. So we're going to use universal op amp number two. And if we click on that one or press enter, we can just set that down anywhere in our schematic. Okay, so I'm going to set it down right in the center. Now, first thing we should knock out is our voltage sources because these are active devices, remember? So we're going to need to have a positive and a negative input power. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit F2 again, type volt, that'll bring me to our voltage source and hit enter. Now, we want our positive to be connected to our positive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit control R two times to rotate this guy. I'm gonna drop him right there. Now. Again, we want our positive connected to the input, so I'm going to put our negative supply down here, and I'm going to hit G, and that's going to bring up this ground menu. So this ground menu allows me to place a ground flag both of these places, and if I place it up here at the top, it'll go ahead and rotate it for me, which is really cool. Now we need to connect these two, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F3, that's going to bring up the wire tool, and if I click on that red node, at least I've set it red, that it's a little bit more visible for you. If we click on that node and connect it, it's going to go ahead and make that connection for us. So now we've got these voltage sources connected to our input power rails, but we haven't told it what voltage it is. So if we right click on these sources, it's gonna ask us for a DC value. I'm just gonna use 10 volts. Okay, so we're gonna have a 10 volt input. Now for this bottom one, we don't want 10 volts. We want it to be minus 10 volts. So we have our plus 10 volts and minus 10 volts. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this output a little bit further out. Okay, that way we can, uh, don't have to click exactly right on it. We have a nice wire coming out, so we know that that's our output. So let's simulate one of the very basic examples that we looked at. So for one of the very basic examples, we had our negative tied to ground. So our negative input is tied to ground. So I hit G again to bring up the ground tool, and then F3 to bring up the wire tool. And I'm just gonna connect that to our negative input. Now our positive input was tied to a sinusoidal voltage source. So we're gonna need another voltage source. I'm gonna hit volt again, bring up a voltage source. I'm just gonna plop it right there. Go ahead and connect our ground and then wire up our voltage source to the positive terminal. Okay, so for this one, we don't want a DC value. This is just series resistance. So we don't want either of these. So we're gonna to have to hit advance. We're gonna right click this voltage source hit advanced, 
and we want a sign. So there's a lot of different types of uh, voltage sources you can use, but we're gonna use a sign. So down here, it's asking us for a lot of those parameters. DC offset is gonna tell us if we want that voltage up higher or down lower, but we want it to oscillate around zero. So I'm just gonna leave it blank. Our amplitude, so our amplitude is gonna tell us how high this voltage goes. I'm gonna say one volt. So we're gonna keep it fairly small. You could make it smaller if you want to or larger. It might change the behavior a little bit, but I'm just gonna do one volt. Now our frequency. Frequency is pretty important, but since this is an ideal op amp, it's not gonna hurt us too much if we just use 10 hertz. Okay, so I'm gonna use 10 hertz. That gives us something that's pretty slow, pretty easy to see. Time delay, we don't want. Theta, phi, or n cycles, we don't want anything with that. We want to just keep going forever until we, or we're not telling it to stop, so it's just gonna keep going forever. The last thing, just for a quality of life improvement, if I just hit OK, we get this little sign thing right here, which kind of makes our schematic look a little messy. So I'm going to right click again and hit make this information visible on schematic, uncheck that box. Whenever I hit OK, that disappears now. So we don't have that information on our schematic anymore, but it does make it look a little bit cleaner. So this looks good to me. What we're going to do is we're going to hit this run button up here. That's going to tell it to simulate, but we have to tell it what we want to simulate first. So we can do lots of different stuff. We're going to do a transient analysis though. So transient is like a time domain analysis. We're going to tell it to stop after one second. So it's going to have 10 cycles. Start saving data at zero. So we want to see the whole thing. Our maximum time step, I'm going to set that at one millisecond. So one millisecond, uh, it's probably going to default to something a little bit slower than that because this is a not a very long simulation, but one millisecond seems good for me. And we're just going to hit OK. We don't want to worry about any of those other parameters. All right, so now we've got our results window. It didn't kick back any errors. So let's start probing around, seeing if we're doing everything correctly. So down at the schematic, I'm going to click on our positive power terminal. And we can see it is 10 volts, exactly what we wanted. And our negative... If we double click, if we just do a single click, it's gonna show both of them. But if we double click, it'll show only that one. So we can actually see it's at negative 10 volts exactly. So that's really good again. Now, this is just tied to ground, so it's not gonna let us click it because it knows it's just, it's just zero volts. But if we take a look at our positive input voltage, we can see it is a one volt signal oscillating around zero volts with a frequency of 10 Hertz. So this is looking a little bit better. Now. What we saw in the last video was that if this thing is going to go above the negative input, then it's gonna saturate very quickly. So it's gonna be limited by that top rail and our top rail is at 10 volts. So our output is gonna be limited to 10 volts. So it's gonna look like it immediately jumps up to 10 volts. And then once we go down below zero, it's gonna jump down to negative 10 volts. So that's what we're expecting to see. We're expecting to see kind of like a rectangular wave on our output. So let's check our output and see what it looks like and it looks exactly like that. So whenever our input is above zero, we get a positive 10 volts. Whenever it's below zero, we get negative 10 volts, and it's just gonna keep doing this forever and ever. Okay, so if maybe we switch this around really quickly. So we'll switch this around a little bit quick, or really quickly. So if we hit F9, oh, not F9. So Shift F, or F9 is undo, Shift F9 is redo. So what I'm gonna do is, instead of trying to use the keys, I'm just gonna grab this move key. I'm not gonna hit drag, because drag is gonna drag our wires with us. I'm just gonna hit move. I'm gonna grab this voltage source. I'm gonna move it over here, okay? Now, if I hit delete, it'll bring up the delete tool. I'll just go ahead and get rid of this ground, use our move key again, and tie our voltage source right there. So now our voltage source is connected to our negative. We need a ground right there. And that red flag is actually telling me that not all my grounds are connected because I have this other one over here. So I'm just gonna connect this to our positive. So now our positive input is connected to ground and our negative input is connected to that same sinusoid. So I'm gonna go ahead and click up here at the top, hit delete, it's gonna bring up these golden scissors and I'm gonna delete these two traces. That way I don't spoil anything. If we hit run, okay, still didn't get any errors, which is good. We can see we still have that same sinusoidal input. Everything else is still the same. Except now if we look at the output, it's reversed. So whenever our input is positive, because it's connected to the negative input, our output is gonna go negative. Same thing, whenever it goes negative, output goes positive. So this is just the flipped version of the previous schematic and design. So this is a good way to start simulating these op amp circuits. And I really do encourage you in these next few videos, take the time to at least simulate one of the circuits in each video, because that's gonna give you a really in-depth understanding of what's going on and maybe how changing some of these parameters can change your final result. 
So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.